You're watching HuffPost Live, where we continue our Women We Love series, a place where, very simply, we celebrate amazing women. Badass women, women who inspire, women who lead, and women who provoke. Provocateurs are definitely welcome here. Now, Josette Sheeran is not only one, is not one to shy away from taking the top seat at some of the most high-profile negotiation tables in the world of business, finance, and philanthropy. She was formerly the vice chairman of the World Economic Fund, has championed for the world's poor as executive director of the United Nations World Food Program, and is currently the president and CEO of the Asia Society. And she joins us now. Thanks for being with me, Gisette. Thanks. She had just finished traveling throughout India and meeting with sex workers and women and boys who had been trafficked for uh, sex purposes. And it's really her new cause is to really uh, help find a pathway and raise awareness about this. And um, so she, uh, you know, she said, uh, it's been picked up all over that, you know, cool, cool men don't buy sex. And, you know, she was trying to make the point that it's not just um, the supply that we have to blame and arrest uh, these women and these boys that get caught up in this, but really we have to look at the demand side and we all have to take responsibility for the whole situation. And there's not many happy stories. There are very few people, even though some women are so desperate, this is the way they can do, make a livelihood, that for many of them, they're really trapped in that and often enslaved into these roles. And so she was making the point that, you know, we really have to look at the demand side and we really have to um, distinguish uh, between really healthy ways to deal with sex in unhealthy ways, and this is one that's very destructive in people's lives. Absolutely. I mean, do you, do you feel like men um, fully understand, uh, you know, how they can be a part mm. of ending human trafficking and, and sex trafficking in particular? Well, they don't. And, you know, one thing we found at Asia Society is, again, if you take any challenge humanity is facing and opportunity, the biggest economies in the world, the most dynamic economies in the world are all emerging in Asia. Uh, in a way, it's the engine of the global economy right now. There's so much hope. There's so much promise. And yet, for every challenge humanity faces, um, you said on my TED Talk, you know, I did have this red cup, and this is the cup that we use to reach children who are hungry. And many people don't understand that the largest number of children who can't even find a cup of food every day are in Asia. So we hear about all the wealth. We hear about all the power. But there are more people below the poverty line in China than all of Africa combined, and the same in India. And the malnutrition rates are very high. So one thing we're doing is we're launching a very innovative policy institute called ASPE, the Asia Society Policy Institute. And it will be the first policy institute devoted to solutions by networking the thought leaders throughout Asia those who have set best practices or unlocked a problem and putting them center stage in the world. So bringing these stories out from the front line about how uh, Thailand, for example, cut malnutrition in half in three years. How did they do it? And let the nations of Asia learn from that. Uh, China has ended famines. Um, this is phenomenal and those stories can be told. And so some of the most exciting work we'll be doing is really looking at not only how you resolve conflict on the front lines, as we've done uh, in discussions with Iran and Myanmar, and I just got back from North Korea and other places, but also how we solve some of these fundamental problems as we find we have the resources to do so. I think it's a very dangerous subject. I think it's a horrible subject. Um, I don't think really that, you know, anybody I think even as we, we as Americans just sort of want to turn our eye to it because it's here as well. 